Hello everybody and welcome back to Tony Northeastern. I hope you're all keeping safe and well. Um, as you can see it's getting a bit crowded on the platform. Um, spent a couple hours up here this afternoon just um, looking at some of the figures and actually painting one. I painted this young lady here with a brolly. Uh, she's a Daypole figure. Um, I cut her out of the set and uh, decided to paint a figure for a, just for a change really. Um, as you can see she's got a brolly. Uh, another figure with a brolly. Alright and as we look along um, there's a bunch of school kids there. Now these are Pico um, figures and four of them I've had to repaint because they weren't in very good nick and they were brand new. Um, obviously you recognise a little kitty with a kite. And we have the train spotters at the end of the platform there. So on the whole it's beginning to look busy now as the station is slowly coming to life. So the object of this video if I can get them done is to focus on a few things that are missing which is the water fountain that's here just there in between the two doors um, the clock which goes over the news agents and another thing I want to do is, is make up a few benches um, in the photographs there's at least one here up against the advertising boards and I think there's another one here and I think there's some more out on the platform right I have zoomed in on this photograph just to show you the drinks fountain between the barbers and the telephone uh, room so that's what I'm hoping to make first and here is the clock um, which I'm going to mount on the wall there but I've just noticed um, there's the main entrance there and there's two windows there so where's the news agents? I've never noticed this before I think what happened is they cut that out there and then moved that clock from there to where the door is now on the later photographs where you see the clock over the entrance right so we have our drawing it's fairly basic there's lots of little tiny measurements missing but it's, it's going to give me an idea of what I'm hoping to achieve so let's crack on And here's a couple of bits I'm going to use. This is the backing plate. That's going to be the little um, basin. And with this tiny piece of copy, copy, copper wire, <laughs> I'm going to make um, a tap with. So here's our little bits and pieces. Now you probably remember these of the three-pin electrical plug insulator. Well, that's going to form the basin underneath. Um, this the, uh, the sink here so first thing I want to do is um, mold the back plate into the shape so it's not quite the right shape so I've got to chop these corners off and round the top edges over um, just take the corners off there not that much And I'll just round them over with a file and then I'll just take these corners off here so that gives us the basic shape now this here is going to be the sink which is going to be glued on like so so I'm going to have to make this a little bit smaller because it's too big and chunky at the moment. So what I'll have to do is 
I'm gonna have to open the hole up while it's still this size and then trim it to have three corners like so. So I'm just gonna round the back edges over on the back plate with a file just to take the sharpness off. Just makes it easier when I come to put on the rod because there's going to be a rod that goes around there. Right, so that's that little job done. Next bit is the sink. So right, we'll keep that to the back. So what do is I'll drill a little tiny hole in there, I think the copper wire to go through. 0.8 drill. Should be thick enough. Yep. Right and the next thing to do is to file that out to a shape that represents the bowl. So I'm just marking it where I want to file it. And then just take, take a round file and file it out. I think I've got the shape uh, I wanted. I filed it out and, and I've rounded the top edge over, down over, if you if you know what I mean. And I've got a line there, that's, that's what I want to trim, trim it to now. So I'll just take that off. Right, so I've, I've taken that little bit off. So the next thing I want to do is take the corners off. Um, Two and a half, three million each from the corner. That's one. I just take those edges off. Just flatten them out a little bit. Right, so with that done, we're going to look at the basin. Now the basin, I've put a hole in the basin and I've got a drill bit and sort of concaved it a little bit to make it look as, as, and give it some depth. And then what I'll do now is just glue that on the bottom of that for the, the sink. Right, so while we're waiting for the basin and the basin top to dry, I've only just glued that on there, we'll concentrate on the back plate. Now, I've got some rod here, so I just want to glue a little bit of rod to go around the top edge here. So, I'll just do that. I've got a pre-bend it a little bit, hopefully it won't snap. Do a glue a little bit at a time. Right, so we'll let that go off, and when that's gone off, I'll do that bit and that bit uh, a little bit at a time, just to, to form it round. So, attempt two. I've just bent the wire. That's all I've done so far, so I'll just squeeze that together. Try and get it nice and tight. Right, 
hold that because that's the nozzle. Bring the actual tap up a little bit. And then point that end down. Bend it slightly. Now that looks a little bit smaller. Still looks too big, but we'll see. And then we'll just bring that back. And what we'll do now is bend the end over slightly. Kind of looks like a tap. If I can get a small enough bend on the top, and then I can just put some um, put some solder onto it to hide the joints of the copper. So I'll do, see if I can bend that as tiny as I can to represent a handle. I think that's it, but is it small enough? There's a question. So let's take a rule to the the actual spout. Now the spout measures at um, five millimeters. No, it doesn't. It measures at six point five millimeters. Now that's way too long for a tap. Way too long. So what I'm going to do is to get it smaller. I'm going to cut the original fold off and then trim that down I need to get it with at least three millimeters to stand a chance of making it look realistic so that's what I've done So let's have a measure. It is now four millimeters. Right, okay. Still not enough. So we'll trim a couple of millimeters off of it. I think that will do for a tap. I'll just cut it off there and glue it into the basin. So as you can see I've finished the back plate. Um, gluing it on a little bit at a time did help to stop any breakages in the corners. But uh, I've still got to clean up the edges. But I think once they're cleaned up oh, I'll be happy with that. Right so I'm just going to glue the tap into the basin and I'm just using a little bit of super glue on there so let's see if that goes in the hole there we go there you go looks about right Right, so now that the edges have been smoothed off on the back plate, I can now glue the sink to the back plate. So I'm just going to put a little bit of cement on there and then we can glue that on there. Right, almost there with the drinks fountain. All I've got to do now is put a an edge round the the sink to hide the basin, uh, like it is in a photograph. So the next phase is to put the plastic strip around the edge. As you can see, I've pre-folded it, 
So hopefully that was, should give me um, a gluing surface. I'll just hold it on there for a few seconds and then we can do the rest. The thing now to do is to add a little bit of plastic card to cover up the sink. It took a while to do this but I had to fold it in five planes um, just to try and get that to fit and I think that will fit nicely. So I'm just going to glue that in now. Like so. Use to do the clock over the news agents. Um, but in this photograph, it shows you as a triangular clock. But I'm going to make it as a square clock, so you can see the clock from all sides of the platform. For you, get what I mean. Um, and I've already pre-painted them. So it's going to be a three-faced clock. So what I'm going to glue this one will be in the middle of these two. We'll see how we go. So the first thing I want to do is cut these out. They've already been painted. So it's just a case of gluing these together. Right, so I'm just adding some glass to the clock faces. I'm just using a tiny amount of super glue that I've put on this piece of card here. It's too much and you end up with a cloudy effect, so it's just a tiny bit in each corner. And now we do the same with the clock faces. Same again, tiny bit of sewer glue in each corner. Yeah, it's, it is only paper, but uh, I just want to make sure we get the clock faces the right way up. And we put them into the clocks. You see, you don't get much time to play around with it with super glue. So what I've done now is I've glued the three clock faces together uh, with the brackets um, on as well up to the back so that will go up against the wall uh, what I've actually added as well is uh, a couple of pitches or a couple of apexes for the roof of the clock um, just to add some extra detail so this is going to replace the grandfather clock that's on the platform and for the final detail I'm just going to add a little bit of this rod um, just on the front apexes, just there, a uh, piece there as well. And then two flat pieces on the top. And what else has come with the kit is a little tiny pin there. And that will go into the centre as well. So as you can see I've added the rod. So I'm just going to add the roofs now to finish it off. So a little bit of glue front and back. And just fix these on. Now it might leave a little bit of a V on the top. So what I might do is I might stick another bit of rod across the top.
So I know the rod is 11mm, well I know the roof is 11mm, so I'll just cut a piece of rod at 11mm. There you go, that finishes it off. So I've just got to paint this now. So what I'm going to do right in there in that in that triangle, I'm going to paint that gold to match the clock faces. And, and I might paint that bit black and black all the way around to hide these joints. Black underneath. And uh and a black roof as well. In the in amongst my kits, oh god knows how long it's been lying in the box. So I thought I'd make these up instead of uh, making my own. I wanted to make my own, but I thought just for quickness, I'd make up this kit. So I have created a builder's yard, as they say in the instructions. And here's the instructions. And this is the jig that you use to put the seats together. Um, it's quite straightforward enough. So. There it is, and um, what I did is you cut it out of here and then you fold it up and then I glued it across there. So that basically makes up the jig for the seats. And then what you do then, you put one of these into each one of the slots just by leaning them over. Like so. And then you pop out your panelling for the seat. Now I've already scored them so they should just fall out. Unless you've got to pop the ends. There they go. Uh, they come in pairs so just by looking at them they're quite straightforward. So that'll be the bottom, that's that'll be the seating because it's flat on the edges and that will be the back panel of the seat because it's rounded over in the corners. Um, so what I'm going to do is just quickly glue one of these together. And then once I'm done, I'm going to paint them. So I'm using some rocket card glue and a toothpick just for quickness. And just to put tiny bits on at a time. Now this is a little bit of a fiddly job these things do move about yeah I forgot I had these um, I made a batch for Tyne Dock but I didn't paint those I just um, made them and left them their natural colour. But I think with these, I think I'll paint these. So what I'll do is I just tap, whoops, see what I mean? They're just so fiddly. Get back in the jig, here you go. Alright, so I'll let that go off and then we'll put the back panel on. Put the back one on. That's it, nice and easy. lift out of there. So you leave it in for a little while then you can just take it out. And then what I'll do then is I'll just just for extra strength I just put a little bit more glue across the backs. 
And that's one down. Right, so that's the four out of the kit. Um, I don't particularly want a double bench like they've got here. Uh, I don't particularly want that. So what I'm going to do is I've already split them when they were inside the flashing because I'd rather have the extra single benches can be done, you just got to split them right down the centre as I have done here You then just take off the little bits of card, but then again, you won't see that because it's the back of the seat. So I just kind of take off any excess, and that'll give us two extra chairs. Right, so we're nearly to the end of the batch of seats, and I just want to show you this little tip. Just get your screwdriver. Once you've got your back panel on, put it in the middle and twist it. And then you end up with the gap like it is in a photograph. So we'll just use a, a screwdriver just to put the back panel on. There we go, that's another one done. Very careful when taking them out of the jig. Today I have been painting the benches now, um, crimson red, it's a gloss paint and I tell you what, the card is absorbing the paint and as you'll see, once I've finished, it looks like real wood it does, and it uh, looks quite realistic once these are finished. So. It's a big improvement as well, painting them up. So this week has been a very productive week. Um, it doesn't look a lot, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of work gone into these, especially the, uh, the little drinks fountain there and the clock, of course, which is uh, going to be mounted on the wall. So, um, while I'm sticking these in place on the station, um, let's go back to those photographs that we saw at the beginning of the video. This is the photograph we were looking at earlier on in the video, right at the start. Uh, as you can see, if I just zoom in a little bit, we can clearly see that there's the main entrance. Alongside the main entrance, you've got one two windows and then we have the uh, door which would have been the the poor parcel store going down like we have now to the ramp and if you notice the 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 clock is here right let's move on to a later photograph you can clearly see the news agents here and alongside it is where I have now have the ramp. So something has happened over the years for this to take place. Now I'm surmising that when it was bombed, it took out the two windows that was here. And then instead of putting the windows back, they put these two massive arches in here and here. And the clock was moved over the main entrance like we have here. So the way I've designed this station is purely basically on the later photographs. So um, <laughs> so do I leave it as it is or do I put those windows back? <laughs> so I think I'll leave it as it is. So, in our final photograph, you can see the drinks fountain here now. 
and you can see Mrs. Arkwright heading towards the DMU parked in the platform there. So let's go and see the view that I have now. Right, so this is the view we have here at the station at the moment. Um, you might not get a chance to see this view again because once the roof goes on um, you might not have access because I think the roof is going to be glued on permanently. I might have a little bit of access maybe in the middle but uh, on the whole the roof will be glued. So as you can see with this photograph we have Mrs. Arkwright leaving the station. We have the drinks fountain right at the back there with two school kids heading towards it. So I've got that at just about the right height I think. And to the right of the view you're looking at is the clock. I've stuck the clock between the two arches. Um, I know in certain photographs the clock was over the main entrance here so I've decided not to do that but uh, on the whole I think I've got it about 90% right I think so I think that's all from me this week um, Thanks for watching, hope you've enjoyed what you've seen, and um, we'll see you again next week. Bye for now. Bye.